Welcome to The Late Show, everybody. I should point out that I'm only responding to this because it was in the trending feed. I may, maybe I'll make this a regular feature. Mike totally phones it in and just responds to something in the trending feed. I may, 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 it might be a good way to avoid the dangers of echo chambering. If I, if I try and sort of carve out a causeway between my echo chamber and a much larger echo chamber. I, that's why I like video responses. That's what they do. Not always successfully, but whatever. Let's, let's proceed. Bring in the bottled lightning, a clean tumbler and a corkscrew. A white supremacist from around the country carrying shields, clubs, body armor, uh, automatic weaponry, descended on Charlottesville, Virginia, a beautiful, great American town. I hereby condemn socialism of all kinds. So you don't need to ask me a second time if I condemn national socialism. I just did. I also, and without hesitation, condemn fascism and communism. I mean, neither of those things should need saying, but hey, this is what we've got. <laughs> Instead of flying cars, yeah. We just, we just got an obligation to say, I am not and never have been a Nazi. <laughs> Fucking capitalist. We have to go back, Marty. To hold a rally, they called Unite the Right. The rally was a clear attempt to spark violence, and it did. St Stephen, Unite the Right is not a clear attempt to spark violence, given the name it is at least ostensibly an attempt to unite people. It would be naive to say they didn't want to fight, but at least they went through the motions of getting a permit to peaceably assemble. So the worst you can call it is a veiled attempt to spark violence. On their part, <laughs> Bash the Fash is a clear attempt to spark violence, by any means necessary. Is a clear attempt to fight. Pigs and blankets, kill all men, it's going down. All clear and unapologetically violent incitements. Especially if you don't even have a permit. Do you condemn these things, Stephen? We will tread on you! We will tread on you! Ah! We will win! It's piss, Shit. paint, and mace. The little grenades with tear gas and smoke bombs they were throwing at us. This guy needs a medic! This guy needs a medic! Perhaps every six months, my montage of left-wing violence to the soundtrack of John T. Swing will get that much richer with examples. The, the, um, the, the pepper spray and the mace seem to be an increasingly popular theme. You know, the chemical warfare. <laughs> do, you, do you condemn these things, UN? Do you condemn these things, NATO? Because I thought it was your fucking job to condemn these things. No? <laughs> All of those clips were examples of violent incitement and unincited violence by extreme leftists. No Nazis, no fascists, no alt right not even a moderate conservative doing any harm or damage there. That was Antifa, the Black Bloc, BLM, BAMN, and various assorted anarcho-communists, to name but a few. Do you condemn these people? Stephen, I'll make it easier for you. Do you condemn communists? One of these white supremacists drove a car into a crowd of counter-protesters, killing one young woman. Counter-protesters? Fuck me, Stephen. Okay. Okay. Needless to say, I condemn any group that with any suspicious regularity drives vehicles into crowds of people. But I doubt very much you would appreciate it if I listed them in order of guilt. 
Suffice to say, the direct actions of the political force known as the old right are now responsible for the deaths of a grand total of one person to date. That's one, Stephen. Do you condemn communists? And injuring 19 more. In addition, two Virginia State troopers... I'm cutting out the parts where he reads out the names of the, of the three deceased people. Because Honey Badger Radio did that once, and it earned us a community strike three years later. How many strikes are you under right now, Late Show? Come again? Who were monitoring the rally from the air were killed when their helicopter crashed. Yes, yes, it was, it was two deaths, essentially by human error. That is a tragedy, but you can't blame it on the Nazis any more than you can blame it on a Portuguese butterfly flapping its wings three weeks ago. If we're including all the people who died as an indirect result of political force... Uh, Stephen, do you condemn communists? <laughs> do you know how many helicopter passengers have died because of communism? But here's one thing that's not difficult to express. Nazis are bad. You're such a wordsmith, Stephen. <laughs> Have you got any more? Come right off the tongue. That was easy. I enjoyed saying it. Oh, well done, you. <laughs> Did you enjoy putting on your own pants this morning? See, I'd say Nazis, right, are a, are a neurotic, paranoid, delusional blood cult of fevered egos that can only hold a society together for just long enough to brainwash, inbreed, retard, and decalcify a generation of suckers before collapsing under its own witch-hunting, finger-pointing chaos. As a professional rhetorical speaker, Stephen, I think that's the, that's the least I can say. Forgive me if I sound snobbish here, but for me, Nazis are bad, okay? He <laughs> doesn't quite cut it. You, 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 you don't seem like you're that into it, Steve. I, I'm reminded, as I often am, of the immortal words of Hitch the Elder. By the way, anyone who starts a sentence saying that, you know immediately, knows and cares nothing about Iran. But so that may be a bad guy, they would say. I hope none of you have ever said it, and I hope if you hear people saying it from now on, you'll challenge it. Yes, it's an understatement to say Saddam Hussein was a bad guy. A frankly irresponsible understatement is a similar understatement to say Nazis are bad. And even a rhetorical understatement warrants a rhetorical correction. But it's not always the, re the result of some tribal relativistic sesquipedalophobia. It's, it, it, for instance, it's not an understatement if it's made by a child. If you're a five-year-old child, all you really need to know about Saddam Hussein is he's, he, was, he's, he was bad. He was a bad man. We will we'll fill you in on the grisly details when you're older. Trust me, it's, it's, it's kind of traumatizing even for an adult. So I will continue to be vigilant, St. Hitch. But I must leave space in my patience for the sad truth that there are grown-ass adults out there who have the vocabulary and the sense of humour of a five-year-old. Or younger. And they are presenting late-night news entertainment for adults. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's got 70 shades of fucked up since you left Hitch. But on Saturday, when the nation looked to our president to rebuke these hate groups, what he said was this. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. That was much better, Steve. Much, much better than Nazis are bad. <laughs> yeah? Look <laughs> at I'll give Trump maybe a 7 out of 10. A little bit bland, had a strong build-up, good use of egregious, and importantly, he condemned all of the violence, not just some of it, or at least many of it, and not just one of it. You, Stephen, have given me an effort that would embarrass a first grader. You've described nothing, you've elaborated nothing, and you are still failing to condemn the violence in its entirety. You get a generous 1 out of 10, I think you have developmental issues. So once again, I'm going to keep my question as simply worded as possible. Do you condemn communists? Many sides? Many sides? What are you doing? Mr. President, Mr. President, this is terrorism, not your order at KFC. Yes, Stephen, Antifa, for instance. 
is a terrorist organization and communism, for instance, is a utopian yet apocalyptic ideology. Do you condemn these things? I'd like the 10 piece bucket with potato wedges, fries, mashed, you know what? Many sides, many sides. So no then. Coleslaw. This is the weirdest advert for communism I've ever seen. <laughs> and I've seen East European animation shorts. Are you on board with this KFC? <laughs> Did you endorse this product placement? How can you possibly say you condemn this in the strongest possible terms when you don't even name the groups responsible or say what they did? I strongly condemn you know who about you know what. I'm still waiting, Stephen. We're all still waiting for you to condemn communists. What can you possibly say about the horrors that Nazis inflicted on the world that you couldn't say about communists? Other than maybe the, the longevity, the reach, and the body count, all of which see Nazism dwarfed by communism. Why can you not even bring yourself to say in your pie-eyed kindergarten English, Stephen, communists are bad? Why is, might it be because you know that if you say communists are bad, there's a good chance that Antifa will come to your house and maybe counter-protest a few bricks through your window. Free speech, my ass! Free speech is just code for hate speech! That is what they and the mainstream media will chant as the extreme left mob comes to take your thumbs, Stephen, if you even think of saying communism is bad. Or Islam is bad, or feminism is bad. Let's face it, Stephen. Those are not hate groups, nor do they in any way create and fund hate groups. No, no, the hate groups are Nazism, Christianity, and uh, yeah, any organization in favor of men's human rights. But communism, Islam, and feminism are love groups. <laughs> we have to say that or they will destroy us. Oh, no. I have seen angrier uh. Yelp reviews. <laughs> Stephen. He called it an egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. You called it, I, I can't remember, what was the quote again? Oh yeah, bad! <laughs> that was the final draft of what your professional team of contemporary comedy writers came up with. You've read angrier Yelp reviews. I have heard two-year-olds. See, I've heard 18 fucking month-year-olds who can articulate their rhetoric with more depth and passion than you did. The only reason you think you have any high ground is because he he condemned all of the violence and you only condemned some of it. Do you think that gives you high ground? Stephen, that's what's happening. You are brazenly excusing and erasing from memory at least half of the violence that took place at Charlottesville and has been taking place all over America and Europe for at least the past year. And you think this is some kind of virtue, Stephen, that you are refusing to condemn as much violence as the president condemns. You've, you've turned violence into a virtue, Colbert. That's fully what you've done there. You've, you've turned the barefaced apologia and system systematic normalization of violence into your moral high ground. And you're doing it with the smug arrogance of a spoiled child. Why would you do this? If, if you didn't write any of the things you're saying and you're somehow saying them against your will, then I'm sorry. Blink twice for help me. Blink once for kill me. Here's the problem. This is the nut of what's most disturbing about this, uh -huh. is that the president came out after a tragedy and after he made his statement, reasonable people could not tell if he was condemning Nazis. Reasonable people, Stephen. Reasonable people. Don't understand th this this outlandish pseudoscientific concept we call many sides. I don't know, is that Latin or something? My niche hoidish? Reasonable people are confused by the concept of a second side. Stephen. What kind of reasonable people are we talking about here? Do you condemn communists? Careful, guys. He says he loves you now, but one day, he's gonna leave you for younger Nazis. 
It's worth mentioning one more time, Stephen, that seven years ago, you and the rest of the Daily Show team organised a rally of your own called the Rally to Restore Sanity. The main thrust of which was, stop calling the president a Nazi, this is insane! But now here we are! Now you've hit the big time in the USA. <laughs> and what have you done? You've replaced David Letterman with Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck at a third grade reading level and a preschool sense of humor. What's that like, Stephen? Does that not at least make you do a little mini sick? Like to the back of your throat there. No, ah, such resilience. Most of all. Look, of course we don't support the Nazis or the KKK. You're not going to use my name, are you? <laughs> I could get in trouble. Every joke you tell is a bear trap, and every time you put your foot in it. Why won't you condemn communists, Stephen? I'll try other angles. Why won't you condemn Black Lives Matter? Do you think they've made any mistakes that you should be willing to bring up in public? Why won't you condemn radical Muslims? You, you, you don't get much more conservative or anti-Semitic than that. Do you condemn radical Muslims? Every time they commit an atrocity at least as gruesome as Charlottesville. Would you condemn radical Muslims if and only if we were speaking in private and off the record? The only people you can get away with condemning publicly and openly are right-wingers, Christians, white identitarians, and anyone who, even so much as inclusively, is in favour of men's human rights. Because they are the people who don't have the power and or the aggression to defend themselves. And yet the entire premise of your routine is, look, they have power and influence over us, and something needs to be done about it. And all, and all, all those love groups that we're not allowed to criticise in public, well, well, they have no power over us at all. <laughs> That's just this thing. I mean, feminists are just being victimised in universities. Everyone knows that. And you know, Black Lives Matter are just getting harassed and arrested at, at their peaceful and lawful assemblies. Everyone knows that. And, I mean, communism doesn't even exist. Why would I condemn it? Textbook description of normalized, Stephen. The white supremacists held a torch-wielding march, only they were holding tiki torches. <laughs> How lame. Yes, very. And it's not violence, is it? Let's not forget the horror show of clips I showed you earlier in the video, in which left-wing extremists throw a never-ending lattice of the first punches. Whereas <laughs> these uh, basic bros with their polo shirts and their tiki torches are just getting together for, for a fucking photo op. And yes, they're trying to look intimidating, but as you have just confirmed, Stephen, they do not. They're not intimidating anyone. They are a laughing stock on sight. So... In this photograph, they are doing no harm and not even intimidating. And yet, they're dangerous and something needs to be done about them. You, you know, you're right, Stephen. The far right is extremely lame at the moment. It could barely even walk. But the far left is extremely blind at the moment. And it's resorted to just punching the shit out of whatever it's on its immediate right. <laughs> and in the kingdom of the blind, the lame are the first against the wall. <laughs> and whereupon they get hacked to death by swords. They don't have guns in the kingdom of the blind. Are you seeing the levels there? Are you see the levels? There? Oh, I'm sorry, Stephen. I'll tone it down for your audience's level. Totalitarianism is bad. Tiki brand is not associated in any way with the events that took place in Charlottesville and are deeply saddened and disappointed. I hope you're all reading that and paying attention because you'll notice Tiki brand does not explicitly condemn Nazis, fascists, white supremacists, or the alt-right by name anywhere in its statement. 
How can you possibly say you condemn this in the strongest possible terms when you don't even name the groups responsible or say what they did? Yes. <laughs> Give it up. Give it up. I gotta say, it's pretty troubling when a backyard decoration comes out swinging stronger against Nazis than the President of the United States. They, 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 can you remind me what was wrong with the president's initial statement? Was it that he didn't name any of the specific groups that Tiki didn't name either? Because for what it's worth, Stephen, what you did wrong was blindly pick a side and call the other side bad. That was it. The, and the side you have picked, Stephen, is communism. And your reasoning for picking this side consists of the three-letter word bad. And the word bad, Stephen, is frankly just a grunt. Some words have, you know, elements of curation to their formation, but the phoneme bad is a, a, a toothless, beefless, primate mouth noise that has made, made it all the way into our everyday vocabulary without ever evolving from the Stone Age. It's just bad. <laughs> it's practically onomatopoeia, you know. <laughs> And that grunt, Stephen, accounts for the entirety of your thesis, your, your diatribe against the Nazis. And it is one grunt more than you have said about communists. The extent of your condemnation of the two most murderous ideologies of the 20th century amounts to nothing and a grunt. Mate, I don't give a fuck what you think about Trump. You are intellectually a lower life form than him. And that is saying all that it is saying. Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. Was that so hard? You still have not condemned communists, Stephen. You still have not condemned Antifa. Why is that still so hard? Why did that take two days? Sir, uh, how do you feel about Nazis? Give me 48 hours to get back to you. I, insert name here, hereby condemn Antifa and any other anarcho-communist terrorist organizations. I'll do it myself. I, Mike Stevenson, hereby condemn Antifa and any other anarcho-communist terrorist organizations. Insert your name here, Stephen. Why will you not insert your name here? It's trivially easy. Why will you not do this? We all salute the same great flag. No, we don't. I have seen their flags. They can't even agree which one they're going to salute. Communists also have flags. They have the hammer and sickle thing. And then they have the black and red anarcho-communist flag, and they still can't decide which way up it should go. But for all the flags I see being flown, Stephen, the only flag I've seen being burned is the good old Stars and Stripes. And guess who's burning them? Yeah, the... <laughs> the anti-fascists don't seem to be interested in burning the fascist flags. The Star Spangled Banner is still their favorite flavor there. Thank you very much for condemning the folks with the Nazi flags and the Confederate flags. I condemn them too. Now, would you care to join me in also condemning the people carrying anarcho-communist flags and very ironically indeed, Russian flags? And they are parading those flags while they are burning the American flag. Sorry, what? Radio fucking silence! Now, he didn't, he didn't answer any questions there, but later he was pressed on the issue by CNN's Jim Acosta. Mr. President, can you explain why? <laughs> I, do, I can't believe you're using that clip. Why would you use this? We've all seen this clip by now. We, it's, it's Trump acting normally, perfectly normally, in response to the haunted ravings of a delirious lunatic. I love this clip. Let's have you then. Mr. President, can you explain why you did not condemn those hate groups by name over the weekend? They've been condemned. They have been condemned. Yes, th that's the thing that just happened, Jim. Like, seconds ago. You're asking him why he didn't do the thing he just did a few seconds ago. Like, for the third time or something. And, and why are we not having a press conference today? You said on Friday we'd have a press conference. 
We had a press conference. We just had a press conference. Yes, that's where you are, Jim. That's the thing you're attending right now. You're at a press conference asking why no press conference. Ah, I don't know what the fuck you're asking him, Jim. Why will you? Why isn't reality? Why is not? Why is what is not? Why isn't answer me? <laughs> it wasn't a question. It was. It was some kind of disorientated cry for help, Jim. You're not well. Can we ask you some more questions then, sir? It doesn't bother me at all, but you know, I like real news, not fake news. You have fake news. Yeah, he let you off lightly there, in my opinion. <laughs> it's the understatement of the century to call you fake news. Fake news at least implies a base understanding of where the line is between reality and the, the bubble of existential vacuum that CNN likes to toggle on and off whenever it likes. That was not even, that was not even fake, let alone news. It was... It was, and I'm not even exaggerating here, it was the kind of statement you would only reasonably expect from a recent victim of severe head trauma. Like, like if you were saying that while lying restrained in a hospital bed, like going, I need a bed, why won't anyone take me to the hospital? That I could just about understand because of the situation. But you're not restrained in a hospital where you need to be, Jim. You're doing it in a... In a position of mind-boggling responsibility. You're talking to the fucking president. He's busy trying to deal with the worst levels of partisan political violence since the fucking 30s. And yet he has to stop what he's doing and listen to you as you catatonically dribble at him. Where am I? What just happened? Why is his not as ours as ours is? The president is not qualified to provide the necessary occupational therapy to treat patients like you, CNN. Stephen Colbert at least yeah, intellectually resembles a two-year-old. You intellectually resemble an embryonic salamander that is in the process of miscarrying. Sir. But his audience certainly sounds like one. Sir, you see how fast you condemned CNN right off the top of your head with no script? Next time, like that, but with Nazis. The thing about Nazis is they will express the argument that races should be kept separate and that the white race is the best race. I oppose this argument in the strongest possible terms. But have you noticed, Stephen and CNN and the rest of you, that at the very least it is an argument? It is at least possible to argue with Nazis because they give us the option of a conversation. They at least have a coherent idea, albeit a highly disagreeable one. You people cannot even give us the courtesy of an argument that makes any fucking sense. You just pretend that half of reality isn't happening. Or in the case of that fucking gurgler from CNN, you pretend none of reality is happening. The room you're currently occupying is not happening. And then you falsely accuse your opponents of the very offences that you yourself are not just flagrantly committing, but wearing on your sleeves. That, that, that clip of the fucking CNN guy was perfect. <laughs> that's everything. That's, that encapsulates everything that's wrong with the mainstream media. That was someone going, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, listen to me. Listen to me, Mr. President. It's very important that you give me attention, that you listen to what I have to say, Mr. President. Are you listening? Are you... Do, do, do I have the undivided attention of the leader of the free world during a time of civil crisis? Good. So, Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> you haven't answered my question, Mr. Pre- <laughs> What? Where are you? Oh, oh, he called us fake news. He called us fake news. You're such a child. I think I proved my point. You guys are bullies. Bullies and, frankly, abusers. Of, of, of whoever you could get away with bullying and abusing. Which, in this case, is straight, white, right-wing males. That specific minority group, and yes, that is very much a minority group, is the group you've delegated as the appropriate receptacles of your blame and your violence. Which doesn't happen a lot. You know, 
What happens when you abuse a specific group of people? It's most of them will slip away into the darkness, either to die or to slowly work until they die. But a small proportion of them, maybe 1%, will become monsters. The kind of monsters only abuse can create. They'll become the very monsters you want to believe in. The monsters at which you point your cameras and your microphones and broadcast 24-7 so no one has to know about the other 99% of this minority group whom you continue to bully and abuse by virtue only of their genetics, their gender expression, and at a pinch, their political leanings. The, the ones in the shadows. The ones quietly and efficiently running society so you don't have to. The ones who've been putting up with the abuse for generations and have still never resorted to violence, and in the vast majority of cases never will. I don't know much about politics, but I have a reasonable understanding of how linguistic and cognitive sleight of hand works. And this is a pattern I see repeated all the time. It's, here's what I think. If you disagree with me, then you must think the I mirror image of what I think, which makes you wrong. It's, it's, it's a formula for the shortest possible straw man. And some people are addicted to this straw man. Hardcore addicted to throwing this kind of straw man around like it's holy water. I call it the zebra crossing. It's, uh, you, you, you come up to me with a zebra and say, this zebra is black. And I reply, no, this zebra is black and white. And you respond, so you're saying this zebra is white? And then I'm, and I'm expected to have a response to that. Yeah, if that happened in a real conversation, if someone said that to you, you would, you wouldn't, you you would not want to talk to that person anymore. It would be immediately obvious to you that this person is either trolling you, or is just a horrific cunt with no sense of self awareness who just who just wants to start impossible arguments with everyone for the attention. Friendship may be magic, but zebras like you need to die, and as we've seen. In the wake of Charlottesville, the media's reaction has been one big zebra crossing. Only the right is culpable. No, both wings are culpable. So you're saying only the left is culpable? Same argument, and yet we put up with it. We wouldn't put up with it from a guy with a zebra, but we put up with it from the mainstream media. Here's another popular zebra crossing fallacy. I hope you've spotted it coming this whole time. Islam is worse for women. No, Islam is bad for men and women. So you're saying Islam is worse for men? <laughs> and yet we put up with it.